No, it's not like being on the phone. Chair of the Seneca Falls Development Corporation, or SFDC, to make the board and the public aware of our plans to assist the town in moving ahead with economic development, both downtown and in general. The SFDC held a meeting in April with over 50 businesses represented, and now would like to let the public also volunteer to help assist in Seneca Falls economic development vision and planning. We therefore have two committees that we are forming, and the sign-up sheets um, I'm going to leave here for anyone in the audience who is interested. And then um, I was wondering if you would like me to leave them with you and the town for perhaps a week or so. And then I can also give out an email address for anyone that perhaps doesn't make that week. Um, the first committee is the Economic Development Plan Group. And that group is going to assist us in updating the 2007 Strategic Plan for Economic Development. This plan can be found on the town website under Seneca Falls Development Corporation. And um, that's already existing, so it's not going to be a horrible undertaking. It's really just going to be updating it and bringing it um, to date. The second plan, the uh, second committee, I'm sorry, is the Economic Development Task Force. And this committee is going to assist us in moving the highest priority task forward that we identify. And some of these tasks have already been identified in that strategic plan that you can find online. Um, and uh, we're hoping to, to identify maybe five or seven tasks and then move ahead with those um, as we see fit and as the committee decides. So I'm gonna leave the sheets here, the table here behind, whoever would like to sign up. And also um, let you know that you can contact us via email. Um, that is Seneca Falls, D-E-V-C-O-R-P, all one word. So Seneca Falls, D-E-V-C-O-R-P, at gmail.com. And that can be questions, sign-ups, anything along the way. You don't have to make the one week. We're happy to, to have volunteers at any time. Um, I also wanted to remind everyone that tomorrow and every Wednesday is the ever-growing farmer's market, that we have lunch vendors, live music, and a lot of great things going on. And um, each week, those vendors grow. We're hoping to go all the way around the bandstand and bring it back for a lot of vendors, close to like 30 vendors this year, and that's everything. We have a coffee vendor who's awesome. We have uh, produce, handmade goods, um, lots of great things. So come down to the farmer's market every Wednesday through um, October as well. So thank you very much for your time. And I'll leave these right on this table. Thank you, Joel. And Joel also mentioned the bandstand. I think kudos needs to go to Dave DeLaylis, who worked hard over that last couple of years and, and, and it's finally completed and he did a really good job and he worked hard at that. So I think he earns a round of applause from everyone. <laughs> Our next petitioner is Luke Moranis uh, from uh, Barton and Judas, the Safe Roots to School Grant Update. Paul Luke. Hello, thank you. Yes, I'm Luke Marinas, uh, another person from Barton and the Judas. You can call me John Condino if you want to, I won't be offended. So, Just a quick update on the Safe Routes to School sidewalk project uh, surrounding Katie Stanton Elementary. 
Uh, as you can see from the board here, uh, this is the preliminary layout of where the new sidewalks will go. I'm going to leave smaller versions of that as along with some of my business cards over here on the table if anyone wants to take it with them. Um, so we're looking at uh, new sidewalks being constructed on Chapin, Garden, Spring, White, and Meadow Streets, uh, shown in the yellow here. Uh, it's going to be nearly 12,000 linear feet of sidewalks. Uh, it's about a $1.1 million project uh, obtained through the grant that you applied for back in 2014. Uh, in addition to the new sidewalk construction, there will be new crosswalks, uh, enhanced signage, uh, ADA compliant curb ramps, and a couple of radar speed uh, assemblies that tell you how, how fast you're going as you approach the school zone. So where we are now is in preliminary design uh, as per the New York State DOT process. Uh, like I mentioned, the funding's in place for both design and construction, uh, depending on the schedule, uh, which we are on. So we're going to get through preliminary design here in the month of July and then get uh, ADP construction plans to the state in August uh, with the anticipated uh, bidding or letting of this project late this fall for construction uh, next year. So what we've done so far is kicked off the environmental process. Uh, the project is anticipated to be a NEPA uh, automatic categorical exclusion and a secret type 2 project so there shouldn't be any more actions for the town to take uh, other than accepting those two findings once the preliminary documents are ready for you. Um, the field survey has been obtained. We're working our way through detailed design of exactly where the sidewalk is going to go and how to get around all the trees and, and up and down all the slopes out there. Uh, we've had a kickoff meeting with key project stakeholders. Uh, we're giving you a quick update right now. <coughs> As we move forward, we need to have another public informational meeting. Uh, I'll need some town, some guidance from the town on where and when to have it. Uh, we're hoping to do it here in a couple weeks towards the end of July. Uh, first thought is either right here in this room or in a potential space at the elementary school itself. Uh, whichever way uh, the town prefers to do that, we can handle it. Uh, as well as uh, assisting with writing letters to notify residents of, of when and where the meeting will be. So I'll be in touch uh, with you to, to get some advice on that. And then as we move forward, just the schedule milestones. Uh, like I said, we hope to get through five preliminary design in July um, with one more public informational meeting in the middle of July, advanced detailed plans by August 15th to meet the state deadline, and the final plans, uh, specifications, and construction estimates in uh, the September range for, for bidding this fall. So, be happy to answer any questions if anything uh, comes up in detail, uh, or I can leave these drawings and diagrams with you and you can get a hold of me at your convenience. Uh, is there any date that it stands out for you as good <clears throat> right now? As maybe, good? Yeah, maybe we could set a date and then um, the, the week of July 18th, uh, anything is fine. Uh, maybe Wednesday or Thursday that week, which would be 20th, 21st, somewhere in that range. 21st would be better for me because I won't be back in Colorado until the 20th. Is that okay with everyone? 21st, we get the economic development at 6 o'clock. Okay, thank you. I'm not looking at my calendar. Yep, LDC at 6 o'clock. Uh, on the 20th would be good. If, okay. Uh, can other board members make that? Okay. Yeah. okay, we'll go with we'll go with the 20th. I probably won't be there. I'm not exactly sure what time my plane's landing. <laughs> okay, and yeah, I'll be in touch regarding uh, getting a letter out to the to the residents or whatever kind of notification you prefer, whether it's website, newspaper, you know, smoke signal, whatever. <laughs> where, where are we going to have that? What time? Let's, let's plan on having it here Wednesday night at, uh, you want to go with uh, 6.30? Sure. Okay. okay. Whatever works for you. I'll ask Kathy if that's okay with her yes, in the state DOT. <laughs> Does that, well, there's four board members, so it has to be opened up as a special meeting. Okay. 
Yeah, the main intent is to get input from the public uh, during preliminary design if anyone has any specific wants, needs, or concerns that should be addressed before we finalize the construction plans. It's a uh, need to get their input. All right, thank you much. Thank you. Our next petitioner is uh, Anne-Marie Heisman from the Seneca County Farm Bureau. Heisman from the Seneca County Farm Bureau. You've all received a letter from me recently in response to the letter that came from the New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets. And the Seneca County Farm Bureau, in light of that letter, is just asking that you show your support for agriculture and rescind the current version of the proposed Local Law 7 and make it something that would be you know, not a problem for agriculture. At this point, you know, we're very concerned about some of the things in the current version of the proposal. So we're just asking that you take a look at the state ag and markets decision and try to modify to make sure that the agriculture needs are taken care of. And thank you for your assistance with this. I'm sure that you know, we can work through this. And if you want to have any um, input, I'm sure that there's quite a few of the uh, farmers in there that would be glad to uh, speak with you and help go over different concerns that they have with it. So you can contact me and I can get you in touch with whoever else you might need to talk to. Right, so thank you and thank you. Our next petitioner is Chris Lydell from the Economic Development Through Tur Tourism. Hi Chris, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? <coughs> That's Lytle, L-Y-T-L-E, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your time tonight. Um, uh, my name is Chris Lytle. My wife and I live at 36 Cayuga Street here in Seneca Falls, right across from the uh, Academy Park at the waterfall where the trash train was literally going to be running right through my front yard. So um, I'm very concerned about this issue. Uh, I wanted to be here tonight and provide perspective because my wife and I moved here um, intentionally. So we selected Seneca Falls as our home after living, uh, we've lived in various uh, parts of the country most recently. We lived in Annapolis, Maryland and I worked in Washington. Uh, my wife wanted to move up to the Finger Lakes because she's a wine educator. She's actually certified as a wine educator. So. I help as much as I can. Um, my work is in fundraising and nonprofit management consulting, so I traveled about five days a week up until the past year. And so I was flying off and I would come back on Friday nights and we've lived here about five years and increasingly I would come back and I wouldn't have to, op I wouldn't have to open my eyes really to know where I was because I could smell Seneca Meadows. Um, it has been gradual, it has been increasing. Um, and it's of concern with regard to economic development, particularly, I think, with regard to tourism and the exploding wine industry here. Uh, there are international uh, uh, winemakers that are relocating to Finger Lakes because it's, it is truly becoming an international, uh, developing an international reputation. And my consideration is that we will miss out on it completely if we don't get rid of the smell from Seneca Meadows. Um, as I say, we moved here because, uh, we first moved here because, and we lived out in the country because we were just wanted to get away from the metropolitan area. We were living in the Washington area. Um, we lived, basically we had 10 acres and we didn't live near anyone. Uh, we loved it. And my wife finally said, Honey, we've got to get into a town. <laughs> I love you, but you're a little boring, so I don't want to drive 20 minutes to get to get anywhere. So we had we had our choice of any community we wanted to to live in, and we've always really liked Seneca Falls. Um, I have an interest in historic housing, historic preservation, and architecture, um, and we both just found the the story about. The role of Seneca Falls with regard to women's rights uh, as, as the founder, or the founding place of women's rights in America to be compelling. So we wanted to be a, a part of Seneca Falls and that's one of the reasons we moved here. Um, 
what I've noticed over time in my work as a uh, fundraising consultant and nonprofit manager is uh, not all money is good money. There are times when you want to be careful when too much of the money from your budget comes from a single source, whether that's grant money, whether it's um, money through taxes, through Seneca Meadows. Um, at any point in time, they could disappear and it poses a threat to the well-being of the community. Um, I think Seneca Meadows is, it really represents that now and it's a lot of money and how to develop our way out of that dependent relationship I think is an important issue. Um, I would love to see them continue to send their money but if we're making decisions, if the board decides to make decisions that they don't like, it seems as though they're going to withhold the money and three minutes. You've reached three minutes. Three minutes, okay. So I'm advocating to enact Local Law 7 to give uh, the community a fighting chance against a major multinational corporation at this point and to uh, enforce, monitor and enforce the host agreement with regard to the terms and conditions of that agreement. Thank you. Bob Miguel, he's going to speak on landfill issues and solid waste management. Hello, Bob. Hello. Uh, no need for an introduction. I was at the uh, visitor center downtown here the other day, and I asked some people from Boston what they thought about the smell, and they said, uh, geez, Boston has problems with their landfill, too. I think you're going to find every, every community that uh, is uh, within 50 miles of the landfill is going to say, yeah, they all stink. Uh, next, uh, I want to address the uh, complaints about voter control. I happen to know the wife of the guy that uh, handles the voter control. And I also happen to know that a study was done on that landfill, and they found that 80% of the calls were bogus. 80%. When I was a kid, we used to call up Evans and say, hey, why don't you shut off the GD stink? We call them almost daily, just as a harassment technique. And let me tell you, certain individuals in here, right now, have been calling the landfill with the same purpose in mind, harassing the guy, to the point where one person was actually parked in his driveway when she made the call at 12.25 in the evening. Okay? So, yes, Maybe there's some issues with odor control. However, when you've been harassed the way that man has been harassed on nights and weekends and by people who are inebriated on a regular basis, sometimes you cop an attitude. Next, I'd like to address the fact that the rail cars that have been sitting there since the rail spur was built seem to be changing colors all by themselves. First they're red and then they're silver and then they're red again. And then I want to address the issue of delaying a decision on proposed local law number seven until after the November election, until you get your selected people, the two appointees elected to a full term. We've seen it before in Waterloo. They did it with a clay mine. They delayed issuing the permit until after all their little cronies got elected and then issued the permit. So we've seen this game before. Thank you. Our next petitioner is uh, Mr. Neil Teague. He's going to speak on the renewable resource part. Uh, good evening. <clears throat> I'm Neil Teague. I live in Fayette. <clears throat> Pardon me, but I do have an office here in Seneca Falls in the town. So I do have a little bit of skin in the game. Uh, I'd like to talk about some opportunities we had. And in fact, if you, several of you may have been here several months ago when I did chat again to the town, with the town. Um, I'll reiterate my concern from then and is that I, I do believe, given what they're doing, Central Meadows is getting a bad rap. I said it then, I agree to it now. And in terms of odor, just go to Clifton Springs. 
mean, that's apparently that's a good thing in Clifton Springs, but here it's a bad thing. But anyway, uh, my concern is that Seneca Falls is dependent upon, it's too dependent upon uh, revenue from Seneca Falls. We need to do something about that. Um, I think it causes a lot of the discord amongst the people here. Both the town is sitting in a very precarious position knowing that they are terribly dependent upon the revenue from Seneca Meadows, yet we don't have any real solution beyond that. So what I'm suggesting here is something that we do. Seneca Meadows does have the renewable resource park. It's underutilized. It's not utilized right now. There, as most of you know, there's a, a plant that takes the, uh, the landfill gas and converts it into methane for use in towering electric generators, produce electricity. My understanding is that there's quite a bit of electricity is being produced there. Um, we also have a plant that converts the landfill gas to methane, pure methane that can be uh, sold as natural gas, which it is, it's natural gas. So we, but we're sitting there with this park owned by Seneca Meadows, as I understand, but it's not being utilized. So my suggestion is, let's do something about it. Now, I got frustrated in, at the end of 2014, having sat with the Seneca Falls Development Corp um, board. I went to meeting after meeting after meeting for probably 18 months, and nothing was done. Now, uh, Joel is talking about a plan. Let's hope it happens. I do, because I think we have a great resource with that part to bring in industry. Let's hope it can happen. But you know, some may say, well, can it really happen? Well, we have in, in um, on Monday, June 13th, the uh, Finger Lakes Times published an article called Yates Hits Home Run in Economic Development. Many of you may have read that. Steve Griffin has done a great job, but it takes activity. I mean, he's got 43 con. You know, according to the article, I have to take it as you know as authentic. He has 43 ongoing projects right now, and then from for the last 10 years, he's had hundreds of projects he's been working on. If, unless we do something, we're not going to get anything done. Nothing will be accomplished. So we need to do something. Let's do something, not just talk about it. Plans are good. The economic development plan in 2007, I've read it several times. It's great. But we haven't done anything in nine years. Let's do something. So anyway, in conclusion, I, I guess that's very simple. Let's do something. Let's not talk about it. Let's not go spend all this time and money on planning unless we start planning some and actually accomplish something rather than talking about it and spending all this time and effort trying to discuss it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Andrew. Our next petitioner is Kent Gardner, the SMI Tax Impact Analysis. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for the opportunity to talk to the board. Um, uh, I'm with the Center for Governmental Research. Uh, CGR is a 100-year-old institution established by uh, Kodak's George Eastman. And uh, we work, we're a not-for-profit. We work around the state and around the region. We've done a, a fair bit of work in Seneca Falls over the years, of Seneca, the, the, uh, the town of uh, or Seneca County. <laughs> Um, we uh, most recently, uh, we were engaged by the uh, Seneca County IDA to assess the economic impact of two alternative proposals for uh, acquisition of some of the depot plan. Uh, prior to that, some of, us, some of you may remember our role in, in looking at the dissolution of the village of Seneca Falls, looking at the uh, economic and fiscal impacts of the dissolution into the, uh, the town of Seneca Falls. <clears throat> so I, in my personal background, I'm a, a, an economist. Uh, a PhD from the University of Wisconsin, uh, Madison. I've been with Center for Government Research now for uh, 25 years. Uh, so we were engaged by uh, Seneca Meadows to, uh, to take a look at the fiscal impact of Seneca Meadows on the community. And I want to go straight to the host community agreement as the previous uh, 
speaker mentioned, it's a substantial sum. Five and a half percent of total revenue, $2.4 million into your budget. Um, that has a, uh, a very substantial impact on your budget, and as a consequence, losing it would um, therefore uh, have a significant impact on the, on the property tax. <clears throat> the other issue is the, it's not uh, simply the, the um, um, the agreement in the $2.4 million, in addition, uh, Seneca Meadows provides uh, a, a benefit in terms of free disposal. Uh, that, that sum comes to about $260,000, um, and there's also additional property tax revenue. So we sum the total for the town of Seneca Falls uh, over 2015 at about $2.7 million. And our role was to calculate what that would mean in terms of a property tax increase if the property tax had to absorb the loss of that $2.7 million. Our calculation is pretty straightforward. Uh, current tax um, is about five twenty-four per $1,000 for the value. Uh, if you were to lose the two point seven dollars and make that up with the property tax, uh, the consequence would be an increase in the property tax rate to about eleven twenty-five. dollars So for the median home value of about $95,200 for, uh, for the town of Seneca, for Seneca Falls, it would mean an increase in, in property tax from um, about um, $500 now uh, to a, a, a little over $1,000. So uh, you know, the increase would be uh, really quite substantial. Again, that's not a surprise. I mean, it's, you know, it's well known. Uh, there are other benefits, obviously, that we uh, documented in the memo that uh, Senator Meadows is referring to in the, in the piece there, Canada. We also have a uh, look at, you know, obviously there's a, an economic impact in terms of the individuals who are employed. Uh, there's also a sales tax impact that uh, affects the, uh, the uh, Senate community. With that, I'm happy to take questions. I'll leave uh, business cards on the table behind if anyone would like to contact me. Thank you. I have a question. Yeah. We're taking questions. Absolutely. So, in your um, report, you you didn't take into consideration if um, we were able to get other businesses to come here and support our our area and get tourism up and find a way to replace the money that Seneca Meadows gives us. So yeah, it absolutely. is doable to do that. Well, it's, it certainly is. I mean, I, um, I, I work with the IDA, and I know the IDA is working hard to bring new businesses to um, the county as a whole. And, uh, particularly your town, and, and I, you know, I would agree that uh, with the previous caller that depending on a, a single source of revenue that's that substantial, um, you know, is uh, it puts you in a difficult position. And, uh, so, um, you know, I, I think regardless of um, you know how you move forward with Seneca Meadows, I would urge you to uh, try to diversify your economy. I think that's really a good thing to do. And, you know, the, the, the tourism foundation that you have is really commendable. Um, the community is well known around the state and around the country, and, uh, and, I, and I certainly applaud your, your interest in diversifying revenue sources. At the same time, it's, it's, it, it's something will take some time and some effort. It's not something you want to look to. Sure, but your report is a little biased because Seneca Men has hired you to do it. No, the report isn't biased. We were asked to do a very specific task, which is take a look at the fiscal impact, which we did. Understood. And we document that the, the, that's the, the, that is the, that is the task. We could, if you were interested, take a look at some of the economic development prospects that would be possible, but um, but that's not what we were asked to do. We were asked to look at the fiscal impact, which is, which is the task we were Thank you. Any other questions? Our next uh, petitioner is Mr. Mark Benjamin. He's going to speak on the SLI landfill. Good evening, Mr. Benjamin. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, may it please the board. Uh, again, thank you very much for providing the opportunity to address uh, you to this evening. I, I do really appreciate it, so thank you for that. Uh, I just want to take a couple minutes uh, and highlight uh, that our environmental stewardship doesn't start and end with our employees' work protecting the environment at our facility. Uh, it also extends out into uh, the community. Uh, and um, these are initiatives that go above and beyond. Uh, They're outside of this uh, benefits agreement that have been referenced earlier. Uh, for one, we recently awarded two Minders Academy graduates 
with the Peter K. Thumbler Memorial Scholarship Award. This award is earned by two outstanding graduates furthering their education in the fields of conservation, environmental science, or a related field of study. And uh, we've been providing this award to two Minders graduates for 13 years now. Uh, one other point I'd like to highlight is we've been partnering with uh, Frank Knight Elementary School, PTO and Recycling Education for the past four years. This uh, partnership promotes the fact that uh, uh, there are hard to recycle items, uh, specifically one of them is uh, juice pouches. And uh, uh, we, uh, we help them promote the fact that these uh, items can be recycled and manufactured into new products. Uh, and uh, through that partnership, the PTO is, is able to uh, uh, garner significant funding, much like uh, an aluminum can drive would do. That's been important to the, to the PTO. Uh, lastly, I just uh, want to note um, that August 21st, uh, we have an open house from noon to 4 p.m. at our facility. Uh, it's a great opportunity to meet the men and women who uh, protect the environment and, and learn more about it. Thank you. Thank you. Our next petitioner is uh, Chad Hartman. He's not here. Petitioner J is Kyle Black. Mr. Black. Good evening. I'd like to thank the board for the opportunity to speak again tonight. Just wanted to give a quick update. Nothing, nothing long, nothing spectacular on our owner efforts. Uh, the 39 vertical wells, the, the, the header pipes, the landfill gas, well pumps um, are all up and fully functional. It's yielded a 15% positive increase in our landfill gas extraction that's going right over to the IBTU and landfill gas to pipeline quality gas energy plant um, has resulted in about a 40% reduction in our odor complaints from our from our high this uh, late winter early spring um, we still are getting some odor complaints uh, mostly during the day when we're operating but we're addressing those as, as, uh, you know, as quickly as we can um, <clears throat> again i'd like to extend the open invitation to the town board to come out for a tour we had the south waste committee out for a tour here a few weeks ago i uh, think it went very well i'd really like to have the town board come out as well and Mark kind of stole my thunder with the uh, the open house. So again, the public's welcome to come. It's Saturday, November 21st from noon to four. Hopefully this great weather will stay with us the rest of this summer with a little bit of rain maybe. But uh, um, we, we really like to have you come out. So be happy to answer any questions that the board has on status and where we're at stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you. Petitioner is uh, Randy Bluto, and he's going to speak on the SMI plan. Good evening, Randy. You would think that since I've been up here twice before, you know, I, the nerves would be ending, but they're not. Um, hello, my name is Randy Bluto, and I live in Waterloo. I would like to thank you on letting me speak here again today. I know all of you as members of the board have a very hard decision to make and each and every one of us are here waiting patiently for the outcome. I must tell you uh, now that I greatly appreciate the fact that you on the board are looking into the pros and cons. We all thank you for that. But I also wanted to say please make your decision carefully. Since the local law 7 has been in talks, my wife and my kids have been wondering, are we going to have to move again? Are they going to have to find new friends and start all over again at different schools? I want to tell them no, but it might be a possibility, 99.99% .99 possibility that if you say yes to the local law seven in its past, we will have to move. We will have to leave our family and friends and my community behind. I know we as adults have many decisions to make, 
let's make the right decision. Say no to Local Law 7 and keep all the jobs here in this wonderful county that is Seneca County and in this town that is Seneca Falls, which I used to be a resident of. I thank you once again for letting me speak again here today as an employee of Seneca Meadows Landfill and as a member of Seneca County. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on with our agenda, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of our regular monthly meeting on June 7th, 2016. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Discussion. See no discussion, we'll go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. Uh, we have a number of reports on our packets tonight. Uh, Door control officer here tonight. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Evening. Would you like to talk uh, about your department? June room? was an excessively busy month, but I would like to thank the chief. Um, it's very difficult for me to prosecute abandoned cases, and thanks to Sergeant Hawker, we were able to pull her over, and it's being adjudicated in a different township. But it's a misdemeanor, and it's punishable. Well, it will be as soon as the governor signs the bill, it's going up from one year in jail and $1,000 to two years in jail and $2,000. And I mean, I get really sick of pulling animals thrown out of cars, thrown out of trucks. And thanks to you, I got this one dead bad. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Zoning officer, you want to? Oh, yeah. I move to accept the report. I need a second on that. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Zoning officer, do you have anything to add to? No, I've got a copy of my report. Okay. Can I make some of the things? Uh, let me move. Uh, that we, I move to accept the report. I need a second. No second. Discussion? Dean, yeah, they just had a call in the 44 Walnut Street. Yes, sir. I grass and animals around there. Check it out tomorrow for me, please. Yep. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Report, I move to approve. I have a second. Second okay, that. Discussion? May I, just real quick, there's a lot going on, if you don't mind, if you guys would indulge me a few moments. Uh, summer programs kicked off today with soccer camp with 73 youngsters up there, which is a great turnout. Tomorrow, summer play program, which we have a waiting list again this year. Um, and then others next week, summer preschool, which again, we have a waiting list. And all the other camps getting started over the next couple weeks, so, so off to a, a really good start. Wanted to remind everybody, uh, Canal Fest this weekend. Uh, we had our last organizing meeting this morning and uh, things are gonna go like we said when they got up, whether we like it or not, it's gonna happen this weekend, so it should be fun. Um, uh, the community center transformation has begun from parking lot to a midway. They started this afternoon. Um, and associated with the Canal Fest is a bunch of maintenance has gone on. Uh, at the Canal Promenade itself, uh, dock maintenance, Worked very hard to get a lot of that cleaned up and fixed up and new pins replaced, uh, pins replaced. Uh, it was entirely pressure washed uh, for the most part, as much as we could reach. And the electrical upgrade has been completed uh, that we talked about. Uh, Water Street Hill, hopefully if many of you have seen that, it looks really great. It will be completed tomorrow with a cleanup. And the fence lines at the community center, a lot of that's been overgrown. Uh, staff, Wyatt, Aaron, Rob, and Dwayne all have done a great job uh, out in the back of the community center along the fence lines behind the homes uh, along Fall Street. And sidewalks, maintenance downtown, a uh, special thank you to Jim Peterson and the guys uh, who uh, got after uh, repairing a lot of the sidewalks and also weed eating and getting rid of some of the things coming up through the cracks. Make it look great down, downtown. 
And then, and as Greg mentioned earlier, the bandstand has been completed, and uh, Aaron is working on the lighting this week to make sure that's up and ready to go. And uh, so, a lot of maintenance has gone on in regards to making sure that we put on a great show this week and let people know how proud we are of what we have and where we're going. And I know they're still looking for volunteers, so if you guys can spread the word that the Canal Fest is looking for some volunteers to help out on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, that would be a great help to our community. Thank you, Mary. That's, good. That's correct. And, that, and with that, Greg, thank you for giving me a moment. On those waiting lists that you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, the, the first applications that come in for those programs get in, and then you have a... The, um, Here's the problem with the summer play program, which is such an important program in our community. How that usually works is the state tells you you can only have so many, I think it's a one to 12 for staff based versus how many students and, and children you can have. What routinely happens is that in the first few days, we're bunched up there pretty high. But as it goes, we have kids who are on vacation and certain kids stop showing or some come someday and some others. Eventually, within usually two to three days, a week at the most, most of the waiting list, if not all of it, is accommodated. Because we really, although last year was the first year, we actually had a very high first week, lower second week, and then we kind of creeped back up again all year, which is a testament to that staff. Uh, Jamie Oberdorf and uh, Heather Panucci and all the kids doing such a great job. And it'll be interesting this year because of the changes um, that we are, we are going through with the involvement with the school and the summer reading program where we're, we're working together with uh, Seneca Falls School District. So it's going to be really interested, uh, interesting to see how that progresses and what our waiting lists, how quickly we can get to the waiting list. Same thing with the summer preschool. That one usually, again, we can usually get to them later on as well. So we'll see how it goes. We'll keep you posted. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, and I, I think, can the kids do um, community service for school for the Canal Fest too? I'm sure they can. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, myself and or uh, Ann Sandroni can sign off on that as a committee. Um, and I, I think we have some that are doing that. Okay. So yes, absolutely, Any, you know, anywhere. And they need volunteers all across the board. They can use them kind of wherever. If somebody wants to help out, I'll find something for them to do. We're really excited, it should be an interesting weekend. And special thanks to Chief and the PD who've and right there at every meeting, making sure we can have everything in place. Security is going to be obviously very important through the whole weekend, fireworks and whole works, and we couldn't do it without them, that's for sure. If you haven't bought your duck yet, please do so. Yes, please do. We'll be selling them down uh, at the information tent all weekend as well, so get it out. But I know they've done well, so great. Any other questions? Okay, we're going to vote to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passes. Highway Superintendent's report. Make the motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Yes, Greg. Um, tomorrow we're starting milling some of the roads in the town. Bridge, or Veterans Bridge will be closed for a couple hours. Get that milling machine in there and get that milled. And then we're headed over to Bridge Street, uh, Toledo Hag, and a couple others. Uh, that will take place tomorrow and Thursday. And being said that, um, we need to, uh, the budget needs to be modified to reflect um, extra money that the state approved for our chips, which is $56,976.06, which would go into the street plan, which is, they count as uh, DA, 5110.408 and that's just extra money that uh, the chips gave the, the state gave us for chips for our roads and that would be reimbursed correct? the state would reimburse us that money yes okay did you mention that figure again uh, fifty six thousand nine hundred and seventy six dollars and six cents can I ask what are chips our total chips is three hundred and six thousand five hundred and eighty six dollars and forty seven cents. Yeah, what does what does it mean? What does it mean? Yeah, what does it stand for? Is it an acronym? The, the, this is just money that the state gives us for road programs and uh, okay. they give us this money and then we they reimburse us. Okay. We have to pay it up front 
and, and then, then they we send the reports in and then re they reimburse us. Okay, I thought maybe you were buying potato chips. <laughs> I was just a little confused. Potato chips? Yeah. Just <laughs> kidding. Do you want to bake potato chips? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Okay. Consolidated highway through the plan. Okay. Highway through the plan. Okay. I'm new with this. Okay. Oh, I get it. <laughs> Pat, uh, we, need, we need to make a motion. Uh, first of all, any other questions for Jeff? Okay. Uh, seeing none, I, I go to, I'll go to a vote to approve his report. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, at the end of the meeting, we'll make a motion to allocate that money. Could you come up with something sure. in writing? Again, that, do you have the figure? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, we'll make that motion at the end of the meeting, Jim. That's fine. Okay. Uh, the town assessor's report, I make a motion to approve. Any second? Second. Discussion. Have anything done? Yes, I would like to request an executive session on a pending legal matter. Okay, and that's at the end of the agenda. Okay, and who would you like to invite in there? The town attorney? Yes. Okay, and that would be? In the board. In, in the board. Okay, and yourself? Okay, any questions for Mr. Collins? Seeing that, we'll go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. The attorney for the town? Yes. Yes. yes, so last month I mentioned that there was a notice of claim that had been filed. Uh, that matter was, uh, our insurance company was made aware of that. Uh, the, the, um, the filing party, the name is David Off, and the town of Sunny Falls Police Department is, on the, is uh, one of the named defendants. So that was uh, referred to our insurance company and they have assigned the firm of Goldberg Sagala to handle us. And we have been contacted by Patrick Nalen of Goldberg Sagala, who will be handling that for the insurance company and uh, I imagine be scheduling a, a, uh, an interview with the claimant shortly. So that is ongoing. Otherwise, I point out we have in old business matters C and D, I would ask the uh, uh, notice C and D on the agenda for old business. I'd ask that those could be carried over until next month. And then otherwise, I have a um, what would be a brief executive session regarding proposed litigation. Okay, I make a motion to approve his report. Second. I'll second. Any discussion from the board? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, the town justices are not here. I make a motion to approve their report. Second. Is there any discussion amongst the board? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, the report from water and sewer, I make a motion to approve. I need a second. Second. Discussion. I have nothing to add to my report. Any questions from the board? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. The report from the police chief, make a motion to approve his report. I'll second. Discussion? <clears throat> I'd just like to add a couple things for everybody viewing and the public out here. Um, on June 8th, uh, Senate Falls Police Department along with Senate County Sheriff's Department participated in the D.A.R.E. Fun Day at Vince's Park. I'd like to uh, thank Jimmy and his staff for hosting that out there. Um, we had a great day with all the fifth grade uh, children that participated and graduated from there in Seneca County. On June 16th, Seneca Falls PD participated in the DARE graduation at Katie Stanton School, where 95 fifth graders successfully graduated from DARE 
and this was our first year that Officer Denny, along with uh, Deputy Chief Goodman, they uh, kind of co-taught and split responsibilities with that, which was very successful. It was nice to see the different agencies interacting with the kids. On June 15th, uh, Seneca Falls Police Department, along with Lifespan from Rochester, did a scam presentation down at the Seneca Falls Community Center. Again, uh, with help with Jim and his staff, uh, we held a nice presentation down there where everybody that attended were, was given information on how to prevent themselves from being the victims of a scam, or if they were already a scam victim, then um, on tips and information on how to help them uh, get through that process. On June 9th, we had the uh, Law Enforcement Special Olympics torch run come through town, and uh, one of our officers also participated in that run, and um, that was very successful. I'd just like to note that, uh, that we participated in that as well. On June 15th, we went over the Senate County Head Start program and provided safe child ID cards to a bunch of kids over there. That is a system that we use. Um, it's in cooperation with Amber Alert and Missing Child Alert. If any child was to go missing or be abducted, uh, we can actually put information out in these programs within minutes. And that's all I have. Thank you, Chief. Any questions? I have a question. I just, I, I, would, I found it interesting that you sent an officer to um, training for bicycle patrol course, and I was wondering if that is something that you're planning on doing in the future, is to get out in the community on bicycles? Yeah, well, that's something we started last year. Um, with staffing, that's been a little bit of an issue, uh, but we will be out next weekend for Canal Fest. Um, we also had help with uh, a bike patrol from Seneca County Sheriff's Department. And uh, yeah, that is something that we've been trying to do. It's just been with staffing difficult at times, uh, but that is always our goal is to get out in the community more and get our community to get to know us better. Okay. Any other questions? I'll make the motion to approve police chief's report. Not gonna... I already made that motion. Oh, so I guess we'll go to a vote. <laughs> so, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passes. Thank you, Chief. Uh, any updates from Barton or Judas? A couple of quick things. Um, we participated in the uh, Water Sewer Committee meeting uh, recently in June. Uh, a couple things that came out of that uh, regarding water uh, there were two petitioners uh, that owned local businesses that came to the town looking for uh, water service that required extension to water service so two projects that we're going to evaluate uh, one's entire and one is um, on route 89 near the end of higher road uh, regarding sewer the route 414 sanitary sewer project is going to be hopefully breaking ground sometime this month uh, we just signed the contract, uh, working out the final logistics with the contractor on, on that. And the, I guess the most important one uh, regarding the sanitary sewer rehab, we submitted a uh, CWSRF grant application and a June for a 25% reimbursement. So hopefully if that grant comes through, that'll be a pretty, pretty substantial reimbursement to the town for that project. So that's all, upwards of about $750,000 grant we're, we're hope, hopefully we can get. Any questions for Mr. Baker? I move to approve his report. Give you a second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. Are there any other committee reports? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll move on to old business. There's been no movement on the sale of condominium and surplus real properties. So we'll, that'll be on the agenda for next month again. Uh, the Auburn Road sewer extension, any movement on that? Auburn Road? Yeah, we, we've put a petition out there. We've got, we have received about 50% of the respondents have replied, slightly less 
Um, and Fifty percent have come across as not in favor. Uh, we actually extend their survey to gravel road as well. More favorable response to gravel. And that was one of the things that came out of that uh, in our committee meeting. The fact that we haven't had a great response is to uh, resend that survey out and just to the, those uh, residents that did not that did not respond to uh, regauge reassess their. Um, their desire for sewer out there. That project actually would be related to one of the projects, uh, the Montezuma Winery, that has requested uh, sewer service there in the town entire. Um, but that certainly would be uh, a project that kind of piggyback and potentially benefit with um, that extension. But obviously, there's a, there's a cost to that. Would you get, have, have the board seen any numbers on that? Board might be interested in seeing. Well, I'll, I'll send that. Yeah, I'll send the yeah. latest results think, to that. Wasn't that? Wasn't that something like three million to go all the way out to? Uh, it's a pretty. Yeah, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, Dave, but it's a pretty substantial cost to go out there. I think um, it was like 1.5 out to the old coke plant where Lux so we could put a pump station there. On, there's, uh, there's George several, Road, and I think it was another million and a half. There's several, yeah, there's several um, alternatives we can look at and incorporation. Originally, I, I believe when the when the survey was developed, uh, Montezuma Winer wasn't really hadn't indicated that interest. They certainly have, and they'd be they would end up being a pretty substantial user. Um, they're looking at the, some of the expansion they want. They will be uh, utilizing quite a bit of water, and they do have a need. Um, so those costs haven't been addressed in there. But right now, the response has been about less than 50-50 uh, regarding. Even just we, a yay or nay on, on whether or not there's a desire for that. Can we piggyback some of that cost with title? Oh, absolutely. That would, that would be part of it. I think to make it, they'll make, certainly make it more viable economically. And any grants available for those kinds of projects? Typically for an extension of a sewer, not typically, but we can we can certainly look at that. Um, we can always we'll, we'll certainly evaluate that. When you're looking at taking folks off the subject, it's always a benefit, and there's, you can certainly demonstrate a uh, net environmental um, benefit to that. Okay, thank you. Can we have a report for next month on that? I think we can have a report. Yes. Okay. okay uh, Pat had mentioned C and D are going to be carried over. Uh, E, the Boulders facility, canal promenade, electrical capacity. Mr. Spina, do you want to? Uh, as I reported earlier in my report, that's been completed, and the big test will be this weekend, but uh, we uh, we feel very confident that we've got it covered. Okay. If not, Chief Skies will take care of it, like last year. <laughs> no, it, um, yeah, it was completed uh, fairly quickly. Very, very happy uh, that uh, we got to it, and uh, well, we're ready to go for Canal Fest. So, okay. numbers on that do you have, Mr. Speaker? The number was... That you might have that, Nikki, from the A fund. Uh, is it for the it, Yes, for yeah, the abstract. It, it's in here. It's in the A fund. And it was 8,000 something. Yeah, we're the recreation. We moved that from uh, the bandstand uh, surplus that we had.
$8,454. Thank you, Annette. Thank you. Okay, we'll, we'll prove that at the end of new business. On to new business. Approval of special events. Mr. Spiner or the chief? Uh, yeah, there were none submitted to my office uh, this month, so okay. we'll move on. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah but we also said, uh, I don't, we all more than get a car show meeting at 10 o'clock. Yep. But we're all set with them with the insurance, I think, aren't we? Yes, I, I, yep, and all in, um, the only piece of insurance I was waiting on any current application was the Midway from Playland Amusements for this weekend. We received that on Friday of last week. So all uh, activities that you approve pending insurance submittals are all submitted. So we're up to date with everything. I just want to make sure for the meeting tomorrow. Yes, you're all set. B is attendance at annual conference Commissioner of Parks and Recreation, Assistant Recreation Director. Yes, uh, I spoke with this at, at my committee meeting. Um, yearly, uh, my assistant, uh, Wendy Carrier, and I are, uh, we both have certifications as uh, um, from National Alliance for Youth Sports. All of our new coaches have to be certified. We also get to piggyback on the Athletic Business Conference where we uh, get to go and see a lot of risk management. Uh, seminars as well as new program seminars. Many of our new programs, uh, many of our programs we have received from that. Uh, this year it's in November, uh, November 16th through the 19th. It's in Orlando, Florida. Uh, it is budgeted. Um, the reason I'm asking now in July is because uh, there's a uh, re uh, registration deadline for August 1st where you save uh, $250 uh, for the registration. So I'm asking for your approval. Uh, not to exceed the three thousand dollars in budget for the two of us to attend that in november okay i'll move to approve the attendance at annual conference for commissioner of parks and recreation director and and the assistant recreation director at, at a price not to exceed three thousand dollars so i have, i have a second on that i'll second it discussion seeing none we'll go to a vote all in favor aye, aye. aye. all opposed motion passes uh, David, I'd like you to make a motion for C, purchase of a new police vehicle. I'd like to make a motion to purchase the police vehicle, not to exceed $40,000. It's a piggyback with Cicero for utility 2016 at $26,999. And we have the cost to upfit the car for the cage, lights, radio, decals, and the computer equipment. I'll second that. Can I add a couple things to that yes. resolution, Nikki? So if we could have in the resolution, okay. as Dave, as Dave stated, I remove my second. So. Well, it would just be to it would just be to yeah. include. It's piggybacking on the town of uh, of Cicero bid uh, that was granted in January of 2016, pursuant to General Municipal Law Section 103. 16. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Now I'll second. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Number D, uh, declaring a surplus to use police vehicles. Any discussion on that? <coughs> Sure, so these are uh, two of the oldest uh, 2012 utility, Ford utility vehicles that we're looking to take out of service um, from the previous purchases. So we are looking to uh, declare these surplus along with the computer equipment and auctions international bidding service. Um, we've used them before, uh, many municipalities use them actually, and we've been very successful with them. Yep, that should be a motion to declare them surplus, and, and then thereafter, I just want to point out that the town's obligated to try and receive uh, a reasonable return for the taxpayers for the for these vehicles, and the you know, auctioning it off is one way to do it. Auction international is a um, 
is a recognized and often used uh, facilitator for this for this purpose. Okay, under D, I uh, I'd like to make a motion to declare for surplus two used police vehicles. I have a second. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Under E, I'd like to declare uh, surplus computer equipment. Uh, I need a second on that. Any further discussion? Chief Templeton, the old core equipment on the floor, is that what we're talking about, the other equipment back there? That's right, yeah, there's old, uh, I don't know, maybe four or five different right. old computers that are sitting there. And they, the hard drives have been removed to be destroyed. Unfortunately, we can't sell them with the hard drives on them, but, uh, so we'll see what we can get out of them. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, and this can start off as a discussion extending the due date of the June water and sewer bills. It was sent out late, correct? Yep. And that's why we're extending the due date. Do we know, know the date they're going to be extended to? Okay. Uh, get to speak to someone today because it wasn't in. Uh, Do we know how late they went out? Probably about two days. Okay, so we should probably extend that. Extend it. Two, two weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks. Okay, I make a motion to extend the due date of the June water and sewer bills by two weeks. I have a second on that. Uh, second that. I second that. Second that. Okay. Uh, any further discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, I, need a, I need a motion to authorize myself, the supervisor, to sign letter of engagement for the SMI 2015 audit. I'll let someone else motion. A motion for to authorize the supervisor to sign the letter of engagement in regards to the SMI 2015 audit. I'll second that. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. This is a contribution to the Rotary Wine and Musical Festival. Uh, and the motion will call to give that 100, as we've done in the past, uh, $150. So I make a motion. I'll second that. Discussion. Letters in the packet. Seeing none, we we'll go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. And I had it here a minute ago. Okay, here it is. Uh, resolution for New York State, New York Main Street grant application. And this has to be signed by you, Mrs. Greer. Uh, resolution by the Town of Seneca Falls Town Board approving and endorsing the Town of Seneca Falls and its application to New York State Homes and Community Renewal for funding under the New York Main Street program. Do I have a second on that? Second that. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Contribution for Cayuga Lake Watershed Network. I'll make that motion if it's for hundred dollars, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. The motion's been made. We need a second. I'll second. Any discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Water and sewer credits? Huh? Which one did I skip? All 69. Convert email to Office 365. Discussion on that before, uh, before I make a motion. Yeah, this is something I've been uh, putting through to public safety for quite some time. Um, putting out to uh, the town board for consideration. I think uh, I finally tightened down the the, uh, the cost associated with this. Um, as tightly as I can. So it's $3,400 to convert our current email service into Office 365, and then it would be $2,016 a year to maintain it there and after. You go those figures again, $3,000? $3,400 to convert for Entree Computer Service to convert our current email service into the Office 365 and then $2,016 for us to stay, have 24 mailboxes, be on Microsoft Office 365 Business Essentials, and eight of our email, um, so our sergeants and above would have additional uh, proof point, which is a 10-year retention policy, and spam protection as well. What do we pay now a year? So we pay currently, Forty dollars a mailbox currently. Twenty-four. No, the eight was uh, for the additional proof point service. Yeah. Twenty-four in total. I think while we need to make a decision on this. Pretty quickly, we just went out to bid on, on uh, the email system. Uh, I'd like to see those bids before they came in. Come in, so I'd like to move the table list. And if the bids come in, we're gonna and, and we see that this is the way we want to go. We can have a special meeting to approve it. But let's see how the bids come in first, because we might go with uh, a different carrier. And I'm not sure how that's going to work 100%. I, yeah, I'm okay with that. I we'll, just, talk, we'll talk about this within the next two weeks because the bids went out. I, they, people are going to be looking at, at stuff, so we might have to break this out a little. But yep. The board will have to understand that a little bit more, I think. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I want, really wanted to get some discussion going on this because this has been something I've been trying to push for. We've had some pretty big issues with our emails in the last year and, uh, and still continuously have them and I wanted to uh, try to do something different. It's a discussion. There's a date that, that people who want to bid on it are going to look at the new building and uh, I think you should be there while, while people are looking so if they have any questions we have to have the appropriate people there to answer the questions. Yeah, that would be great. Just let me know when it is. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And then the bids have to be in. We're going to make a decision by the 29th. July 29th. Okay, so <coughs> I'm going to make a motion to table this for now. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. One and two credits. None? Okay. We have two resolutions that we're going to come back to, and uh, the first one is. Uh, yep. And before we start, Jim, could you give me the line number for the budget? Regarding the chips uh, funding, line numbers. <clears throat> the line numbers DA 
5110.408. Okay. I think I have these written, but it'd be better. I'd probably be better off if I read them and then have this back up rather than trying to decipher it. Uh, so the first regarding the CHIPS funding regarding the highway department, whereas the town of Seneca Falls Highway Department has been notified that they will receive $56,976.06, more than was originally budgeted from the New York State Consolidated Highway Improvement Program, or CHIPS, whereas the CHIPS funding will reimburse the town for funds to improve the town's highways. Now, therefore, be resolved that the town of Seneca Falls hereby amends the 2016 budget by adding $56,976.06 to line DA 5110.408. This increase being the amount of the reimbursement. I'll make that motion. Second that. Any discussion? Saying none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passes. Now regarding the electric uh, electric work done on the canal, whereas the town of Seneca Falls owns and operates electrical utilities along the New York State C Seneca Cuyahoga Canal for use by boaters visiting our community. I'll make the point. Out. Out, Thank you. Okay, whereas some of the town's facilities were damaged by vandals, whereas the town received a quote for the repair of these electric facilities for $8,454 from Carzolo Electric. Whereas the town board was unable to conduct a formal meeting to authorize payment for this purpose before the beginning of the limited voting season. Now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Seneca Falls hereby ratifies the payment of $8,454 to Carzolo Electric for repair of the town's electric facilities along the Seneca Cuyahoga Canal. I'll make that motion. Second it. Any further discussion? Uh, the only discussion I would have on, on that is periodically as some of these electrical issues come up that we need an electrician right away. It's, it's, emer it's an emergency situation and we need to hire someone and uh, so we might want to take a close look at that during budget time on what we're going to do in those emergency situ situations uh, instead of having to wait for something like that, this. Uh, and that, I'd like the full board to think about that. We'll discuss it during budget time. Any more discussion? Seeing none, I'm going to vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passes. I'd like to make a motion to uh, pay the bills. You need a second, guys? A second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passes. 